Komm, hier mein Little Jacky, nur auf Smooth Me Bucky, have a bit of Cracky, till the boat comes in. Dance to the daddy, sing to the mummy, dance to the daddy, to the mummy, sing. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have the fishy when the boat comes in. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have the fishy when the boat comes in. How you doing, George? Good morning. Come on in, Matt. Make yourself at home. I hope you know what you're in for, Jack. I know that all right. Eight quid a week. Roll them books. Have you reading them lot? I can read. <laughs> you look well behind that desk, Jack. Aye, beats working any day. Well, you'll work all right. Well, uh... Ah, you will. I'm one of your members, think on. If I'm paying you, I want me pound of flesh. <laughs> Hang your head up. See if you can find a couple of glasses. It's five to nine in the morning, man. Toast. It's never too early for a toast. That's the way you're going to live, is it? Sit in your backside and drink whiskey. Think of a better way. Dusty. Still, we're third worse in France. I'm not in France now. France is over, Matt. Just like stealing sheep is over and going to prison. For you, maybe. I might have to go back to sheep stealing sooner don't get a start. Morbid, man. Why are you always so morbid? Look on the bright side, man. Here. Here's to you, Jack. No, no, no. This is my toast. Welcome, bunny lad. Welcome to Liberty Hall. You won't get fat on that. I don't want to get fat. I mean the way you have to work. Oh, survive. I will both know. Anyway, we're doing a bit more than surviving. Uh-huh. Not so bad for a shop round here. So, um, maybe it's time I had a new coat? Well, you had a new one last year. New? That was our Jessie's. <laughs> Oh, dear. Business is starting early than you. Letter from our Billy. All right. Oh, he's got a few days off. He's coming home. Wants to see our town. Prison's no place for doctors. But he's got a right to see his own brother. You've got all the rights there is. A man now, Bella. Adult, fully qualified. Right to vote, just like me. You know that Mrs. Herborn was a strain nine. Oh, our man's been out of a job for weeks. Why well, wasn't he put him out of a job? New coat has to be paid for. That'll be off then. Did you rush? A job, man. I heard they were starting fit as adoptions. Get your glass. Oh. You'll be the typist. Yes. What's your name, Pat? Laidlaw, Annie Laidlaw. I mean, you, boss, Jack Ford. This is my associate, uh, Mr. Headley. Pleased Hello. to meet you. I wasn't expecting you till next week, Mr. Ford. You didn't hear then? Hear what? Your boss, Norman Taylor. He died last night. Tram car accident. So I thought I'd better come in early and mind the office. Hey, poor Mr. Taylor, I am sorry. Ah, you'll take a lot of living up to. Would you like a cup of tea or anything, Mr. Ford? Tea would be very nice, Miss Laidlaw. Two cups. 
Oh, uh, Miss Laidlaw, we may as well begin as we mean to go on. You came in at seven minutes past nine. I'm very sorry, Mr. Ford. Was Let's just... not spoil my first day with excuses, Miss Laidlaw. See if you can't get here first tomorrow, eh? Yes, Mr. Ford. You're a hard one, Jack. You'll find out. Not to do with me. Fancy old Taylor fall under a tram. How on earth did he manage that? Tough his testimonial dinner. Too bloody proud to take a taxi. Ruined his gold watch and all. It has got to do with you, Matt. Norman Taylor? I've liked you since the first day I met you, Matt. And you know why? You never expect out for yourself. Well, I could manage, Jack. I hope so, Bonnie Lard, for both our sakes. Well, didn't you hear what I said to that flapper there? My associate, Mr. Headley? Don't you remember? The district secretary's allowed to appoint his own assistant. Well, you're it. Five quid a week. What? Now we'll see if it's work or not. I thought you'd be pleased now where Billy's coming. Of course I'm pleased. Well, you don't look it. It's just... Well, where's he going to stay, ma'am? And he's home with us. Dad'll have him. Certainly he will. Billy's his son. Tom's his son. Yeah, well, we'll fight that battle when we come to it. But Billy, why you darling's the world of him. I only hope it's mutual, ma'am. Now what's that supposed to mean? Oh, I'm sorry. Since I gave up teaching, I've had too much time to brood. I was just thinking, you know how keen our Billy is on socialism. Oh, politics. I thought you meant Tom. You know how Billy's going to go and see him. And Dad doesn't want him to. And your Dad doesn't want anybody to see Tom. I saw an old friend he was this morning. Looking a proper tough he was. I was hanging out the washing he passed the bottom of the street. All briefcase and trilby out. Who, ma'am? That's 12 o'clock. Arthur will be in for his lunch. Jack Ford. Did he speak to you? No, you had Matt Headley with him. Couldn't wait to get started, could he? That's Jack. Yes, ma'am. That's Jack. Mrs. Seaton, how nice to see oh, you. Oh, for lad, I'm keeping you from your dinner. Won't you stay and have some with us? What, and let Bill Seaton starve? I'd never hear the last of it. No, I'd better be off. Won't you come to the door with us, Jessie? You stop and get your man his dinner. Yes, ma'am. Anything to please the Lord and Master. Take no orders, Arthur, lad. She doesn't mean it. Nothing wrong, I hope. Oh, Billy's coming down for a couple of days. Oh. Have you any objections? Of course not. Not if it makes you happy. Happy? He's really delirious. Eee, whoever would have thought it. <laughs> oh, Matt in an office job. Thanks, Jack. <laughs> he wouldn't get it if he didn't deserve it. Why, something smells good. Steak kidney pie. Where is Matt? Still working. I don't want it to spoil. He'll be along. He just want to get a paper. Oh, get us a drink, pet. What in the world you got there? Homework, one in last. I'm in the top class now. Those are for you. These are all from estate agents. That's right. Hotspur Avenue, Chestnut Grove, Oldswater Terrace. Wait, Jack, what in the world do I want with these? You don't live here all your life, dear. You? you mean you can go and live in Hotspur Avenue? What do you think I mean? Oh, Jack! Hey, now, mind oh. me papers, mind me papers. You're as bad as your brother. You never believe the good things will happen to you, do you? Well, they can, they have. Eight quid a week coming in and three years before I'm up for re-election. You what if you don't get in? I'm a move. Back here. Get this into your head, Dolly. Once we've shut the door on this dump, we're never coming back. Oh, Jack. Mm. What about our Matt? What about him? Well, where's he going to live? With us, same as here. There'll be plenty of room. Oh, Jack, does he have to? I'm sorry I'm late, Jack. I have to go down the top with this lot. Did you put in an order? To the office. Like you said, start tomorrow morning. To the office? <laughs> Hi, we are grand. Is that all you do all day? Read the papers? <laughs> like I said to Matt here. It's money for old rope. Hello. What's up? Old mate of mine. Sir Horatio Manners, recently elected chairman of the board of Lewis Bishop and Company, sat in Newcastle yesterday. Lewis Bishop? Well, you used to work in that yard, didn't you, Matt? Well, so did everybody else. It's the biggest one for miles. Go on, Jack. The company looks forward to next year in a spirit of cautious optimism. Provided that manpower and material costs remain stabilised, we anticipate a not unreasonable dividend. Oh, let's eat. We can sort this out after. Oh, come on, go out and celebrate. No, Bonnie Lass, if Walter Ratio is looking forward to his dividends next year, we've got work to do. What well, didn't Norman Taylor take care of next year's pay talks? Norman Taylor fell under a tram, Matt. He couldn't even take care of himself. Come to fetch a rabbit skin To wrap his baby bones Anybody in? Oh, you don't have any greater. Sorry. Oh, that is grand to see you. Good morning, ma'am. Oh, let's have a look at you. We keep all right. Tell me. How's my dad? Oh, he's just the same. He's busy in the shop. He's got to travel with him. Business doing well. There's some grumble your dad says. He doesn't know what else. Hey, Billy. Dr. Seaton. 
I never thought I'd see the day. I did. I thought of him. I thought of him being a doctor got me through more hard shifts. Oh, yes, son. And Dad, and you? Oh, I mustn't grumble. Uh, it took Mother Fuller Stone to finish me. Still at that hospital, are you? That's right. You specialising? Oh, difficult to say just yet, Dad. Oh, you want to think about it, son. There'll always be a need for specialists. Cry in need. I've no work throughout my life. Don't get used to it. It's like a new machine, Matt. Once you get the hang of it, it runs itself. Well, that reminds me. There's a letter here from a bloke who lost his finger in a lathe. Shouldn't that be filed under compensation claims? Aye, it should. Not much of a hand of the filing system, old Norman. Thank you. Almost late, Law. Three minutes to nine this morning. You keep that up, and you and me are going to get along fine. Les Mallow, I might have known. What's up, then? Trouble, that's what's up. They might have given me a chance to get me out in court off first. Listen to this. Dear Brother Ford, as you are doubtless aware, a special committee was formed in your predecessor's time to consider suitable action to increase the hourly rate by tuppence an hour. We, the undersigned, consider that the time for suitable action has now come. You are cordially invited to attend a meeting to consider such action at the Lambert Hall, Marshall Street at 7.30 this evening, and it's signed. Leslie Mallow, convener, Albert Bain, Sidney Poskett and Robert Glenn. Tums an hour on the basic, that's canny money. Ah, you forget it, you know this lot. Aye. Aye, me and all. Red as fire engines, the lot of them. And Les Mallow's the convener, and I did him out of this job. Well, it's not your fault. You're not thinking, Matt. They want tuppence an hour, and it's my job to get it. I've been elected for three years. How's it going to look if I fail in a week? That bugger Mallow! He's only doing what I'd do. How are you? Oh, what are we looking for, Jim? The Norman Taylor must have put something on paper for this one, and we better find it, or else. My, we do look smart. You can't beat Scotland for tweed. <laughs> you know, it's the tie. I could hardly miss it. Red tie's the fashion, are they? Those will be for me, sis. I see. And I'm proud of you, Billy. It can't be easy, not in your position. Easy? If it was easy, it wouldn't be worth doing. Anybody can see your father's a minor. Did you speak to Dad? A bit. He wants us to specialise. Do you? Well, he does yet. You going back to Edinburgh, then? Just for the time being. I only came down to see our Tom. Why, Billy? Well, I think one of us should. And I didn't. I didn't say that. He didn't have to. It's Arthur. You want to you visit Tom? He's never mentioned it, but he'd hate the idea. I know he would. No, how can you know? By being married to him. Well, well, this is that. A page out of a bloody notebook, it would be. The district's... Do you me? The district secretary agreed to do all in his... Power to implement the just demand for tuppence on the hourly rate. And there's a few notes. I can hardly read them. Bye, he must have had a few when he wrote this. Did he sign it. Aye, signed and did it. What are you going to do, Jack? Lose it? You're learning. But it wouldn't work, Matt. There's four witnesses against us. What are you going to do then, Jack? The best I can. That's all that's left. So, you return in front. Hardly that. Bill is done all right. All right. Why, man, he doth bestride the narrow world like a colossus. And we pet him in, walk under his huge legs, and peep about. The schoolmaster may not have much practical value, but he can always supply quotations. Not a very good one this time. I'm only just qualified. Up at the hospital, they treat us like an idiot child. Even the porters. There's still an awful lot to learn. There always is. At your age, Billy, you may resent that fact, but of mine, it's a kind of solace. Are you here for long? Just a few days. He's going to visit Tom. I should think a visit from the right man is exactly what Tom needs. Arthur. Oh, who in the world can that be? Maybe you're the right man, Arthur. I mean, that as a compliment. Maybe, Billy, but I'm not Tom's brother. You remember Les Mallow, don't you, Arthur? Of course. How are you, Mr. Mallow? I'm well, fine, thanks. My brother, Dr. Seaton. So you're qualified. Well done, lad. You sit down. No, not me work clothes. Nonsense. Right, well, I'll spread a bit of paper. The Financial Times. Are you checking on your investments, Les? Checking on my employers, lad. And they want chicken on some of them. Tea, Les? Fresh made? No, thanks. I've, uh, I've come for some information. If you'll excuse me, there are some estimates I must check. Well, then, Mr. Ashton, you mustn't let me drive you away. No, I won't do that. I'll work in the dining room, Jesse. Jesse, I didn't mean... He has his politics, I have mine. We keep them separate. I'm sorry, it's just that I can't get used to the idea that you're not married to a socialist. Not anybody else. That's enough. What do you want to ask me, Les? 
you want me to go as well? That's up to Les. No, it's all right, Billy. It's about Lewis Bishop and Cole. The shipyard? That's right. You know a lot more about the shipyards than I do. I'm not about Lewis Bishop. I've just appointed a new chairman of the board. I've just been reading about it. That's why I've got the Financial Times. His name's Manners. Sir Horatio Manners? A friend of yours, Jesse. I never met him in my life. Well, I've heard that Jack Ford did. And Jack Ford was going to work for him. You shouldn't listen to gossip, Les. Not you of all people. You can't avoid gossip in Gallows Shield or anywhere else. But it's not that that I came for. What then? Fact. Sir Horatio Manners is chairman of one of the biggest shipyards in the Northeast. Jack Ford is our district secretary. Now, if these two are pally, I want to know about it. I have a right to know about it, Jesse. What right? The right to protect our members from getting cheated. I want no deals, no quiet arrangements, no backhanders. Jack wouldn't. Would he not? Well, I do, Billy. Tell him, of course. You think it's that easy? It's men's wages, Jess. Their conditions, the way their wives and families live. Of course it's easy. Jack's known Sir Horatio Manners for years. There was talk of a job once, but it didn't come off. As far as I know, they're still friends. Well, thanks, Jesse. Well, I won't keep you any longer from your teas. It's all right, I'll let myself out. Oh, by the way, uh, Denton Branch is giving a dance on Friday night, if anybody feels like coming along. I'd like to. How about you, sis? I'll ask Arthur. Put us down for two. Right. Well, I'll see you there, then. Jack Ford. I haven't even seen him in three months and he can still do this to me. Well, Daft, he says, well, maybe you and me should change places. <laughs> <laughs> Evening, brothers. <laughs> this is a private meeting, Brother Ford. I hope so, Brother Poskett. It's a highly confidential matter. And what have you brought your brother-in-law for? I haven't brought my brother-in-law. This is Brother Headley, the Assistant Secretary of our Union. I didn't bring him, Brother Poskett. He came here by himself. He's as much an idea as any of us. Uh-huh. So, the assistant secretary. You've made your brother-in-law the assistant secretary, have you? That's right. <laughs> well, you've got your nerve. You've got a bit nerve yourself, as I remember, Brother Poskett. Don't try and change the subject. Not. A few months ago, a few of us saved a poor widow's furniture for her. You were one. You knew we risked prison. I even went to prison. But you turned up. Solidarity, Brother Poskett. To help the widow of one of our members. You are trying to change the subject. Now, listen, give us a chance. I got nabbed because I was still there when the police came. But Matt here was the last man out. Half a minute later, he would have been in Durham jail with me. I'm not Three saying he Three campaign medals, mention in dispatches, an able and trusted non-commissioned officer used to dealing with men's problems. Good union man, fully paid up all his life and risked his liberty for one of his own. Certainly, I chose him. I was proud to choose him. And if you don't like it, Poskett, we can step outside and I'll knock your blog off. <laughs> no, no, Brother Headley. There will be no violence. Till after the meeting. How are you in Sidon? You two are the funniest things since the Keystone Cops. Good evening, Brother Ford. Evening, Les. Nice of you to spare the time. Union business, brother. There's nothing more important. Let's hear what you have to say. I'm the convener of this meeting, Brother Ford, if you don't mind. Go ahead, then. Convene. Brothers, we are here this evening to discuss the possibility of an improvement in our basic rate. Two pence an hour. But, Brother Ford, we already met your predecessor. Brother Norman Taylor, and it was agreed then that we could and should have this thing. And he said he would add his backing as a full-time union official. That was a position which you and your brother-in-law have inherited. Steady on, Les. Just a minute. First off, I want to know from you, brother, whether you're going to lead us in this fight, whether you're going to honour the obligations of your office. Ah, you have picked up some grand words, Les. Real educated words. Answer his question, Brother Ford. Which one leads you in a fight or act like a union official? It's the same thing. Maybe. Brother Headley and me, we haven't got much time for reading. We're not scholars, we're practical men like yourselves, and being practical men, we like to know what we're talking about. We're talking about money. Nigh on eight shillings a week. Well? Go on, brother, I'm listening. We don't want you to listen. We want you to say something. Do you? Brother Marlon? Well, you're our leader. Lead us. Cards on the table? All the cards, Brother Ford. You haven't left us that many to play. First off, you'll never get twopence an hour. Now, just a minute. And you knew that when you and poor old Norman first decided to give it a try. Less of the poor old Norman, he was a good man. Where did you dream this one up, brothers, eh, you and Norman? The green man, the boilermaker's arms, the blue bell? Yes. Eating in the pub was Norman's idea. He said these were exploratory talk. Oh, did he now? So it was better to meet away from the office, like. The pub was his office, man, you know that. We were all sober. Including Norman. There's Norman's record of your meeting. 
Not all that easy to read, but you can't smell the whiskey. All right, sometimes Norman did get carried away. You're right there. Sometimes it took two good men to carry him. No, that. Brother Ford's right, you know. You and me have turned ourselves in the past, Brother Puskett. And why did you do it? Because he was a good man sober, a caring man. Aye, he was. And a good union official. I was made a note here, Brother Mallow. Or well, maybe you'd like to read it for us. It looks like ask for tuppence to take a penny. Is that the way it was? Cards on the table, brothers. Finished? Yes. I'd have helped you if you'd want it. I think you've forgotten how dull the estimates are. Arthur? Mm hmm? You really had the big stick out, didn't you? I'm sorry? Oh, Billy and Les Mallow. Surely you're not saying I was rude to a guest? Nothing I could prove, Arthur. You don't like what I'm doing, do you? The Labour Party, ward meetings, all that. I've got to do something. I can't just sit. It's your decision. I haven't interfered. But? You're wishing I had a child. I think you have one. Billy? You're jealous of Billy? I quoted Cassius, did I not? He knew all about jealousy. And so it seems to I. So that's it, is it? I try for a penny. No, brother. You get a penny. Or else it's a strike. Norman Taylor didn't say anything about strikes. I see. Your office carries a three-month probationary period, brother. Now's your chance to test yourself. So it's a penny and no strike, or I'm out. That's about it. I thought only the district committee could do that. Oh, they will. Don't fret. We're not asking very much. Just do your job. That's what you're paid for. We don't know I'll get you a wage. Think on. Shouldn't be so difficult, should it? Not for you, brother. Am I going to get the benefit of your advice, Brother Mallow? It's free, Brother Ford. I read something the other day that might just help us. Some of Sir Horatio Manners has been made chairman of the board of Lewis Bishop. <laughs> He'll not help us. Wait, brother. Lewis Bishop is the biggest shipyard in these parts. If they give us a penny, the others will throw the line. Well, we know that, man. Yes, I know you know that. But what you don't know is that Sir Horatio Manners is a good mate of our district secretary. Isn't he, brother? I've met him. I thought you were going to work for him. But I didn't lay as I'm working for you. That's what we want to hear you say, brother. That you're working for us. I haven't said out to your mom about this. But this time, I think I'm getting better. You're in faith, are you? Oh, I'm always fit, man. I'm in my legs. You told your doctor? Patterson. <laughs> Getting rid of him. He's a good doctor. Not for me, he's not. He says I'm a cripple. Resign yourself, he says. Ah, uh, just. <laughs> what he means is give in. Well, you never do that, Dad. No, no, I will not. But mind, I could do with a bit of help. Oh, there's never any peace. Is my man there? No, this is not the shop, so young Tommy. I'll go. You will not. You give all this stuff away. I will, uh. So long, Dad. Aye. There are some. Well, well, this is a pleasant surprise. Sir Horatio, this is my assistant secretary, Matt Headley. Brought up your reserves, have you? I didn't fancy being outnumbered. <laughs> uh, you'll stay to lunch. Very kind. Don't you believe it? I never did. Enjoying your work, Miss Headley? Well, it's a change from the shipyard, Sir Horatio, but I'm not here to enjoy it. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Very interesting, eh, Ford? If you and I didn't like what we were doing, we'd be off after something else. Oh, fair do, Sir Horatio. Jack didn't enjoy going to prison. What they tell me enjoyed coming out. Oh, it was like beating your head against a brick wall. It's nice when you stop. I have an idea that's what you're about to do now. Beat your head against a brick wall. What are you after? Money for my members. Money. If you really want a headache for it. Maybe I won't be the only one. All right. Let's hear it. I've uh, worked out a few figures. Been doing your own work, have you? Yeah. Do you believe everything you read in the Financial Times? You're not saying an organ of the capitalist press tells lies? Certainly not. They could be misled. 
By you? By me, by you, by anyone in our position. Quite perfectly, of course. <laughs> We're shocking, Mr. Headley. You shocked, Matt? Well, I started this game a bit late. I'll play better when I learn the rules. There aren't any, Headley. That's what makes it so difficult. What are you asking? My committee wants tuppence an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Two things I liked about you, Ford. Your brains and your courage. Whatever happened to your brains? Sit, sit. Yes, sir. All right. In the pink? We, uh, <coughs> Mum sounded worried about you. I'm fine. Never better. Honest? That's good. How's Mum? Looking well. Ben? I went over him myself. He's a champion. Is he? Really? Sit straight, sit. I won't, I won't tell you again. Sorry, sir. Say Jack Ford, Billy. You want us to? Aye, that's no trouble. Tell him. Tell him it was a good Mara. All right. Billy will be with him now. Huh? Billy, your youngest will be with Tom, your eldest son. I've told you before, Bella, they're both men, free to go their own road. Tom will be out soon. What road they go then? That was his heaven paid up. All of it. Three shillings and nine pence. Where in the world would she get the money? Oh, it's surprising what you can do when you have to. You know that new coat now. Uh, I didn't tell you about Dad. No. I'm a bit worried about him. He thinks he's getting better. He's not. Why? Jessie sent her love. It's nice of her. Tom, man, for God's sake, I'm doing your best. We know you can let us try. Billy, man, you mean well, but it's not worth it, is it? Tom. Look, you've come here once. You've done your best. All right. I wouldn't bother coming back. Time's up. Can you tell Jack what I said? I will. All right, Tom. So long. Let's go back to Ulster, then. I haven't touched a brandy since I was in France. He had about half a pint. He was mentioned in dispatches. Mr. Headley was in your son's company in all, sir, is you? That won't work, Ford. Not this time. There's no harm in trying. Tuppence just isn't on you now. Might manage a farthing. A farthing? Well, I'll have to put it to my members. Yeah, please do. This offer won't last forever, you know. Nothing lasts forever. Not even Lewis Bishop and Company. You gave him what for, all right? Telling him Lewis Bishop wouldn't last forever. I wonder if he believed you. I'm sorry, Jack. Just the way it went on. We were talking about men. Could have been a hand of cards. It'll never be a game to you, will it? It's not a game, no rules. He said so himself. Aye, that's what makes it so exciting. Is that all it is? What's the most important, Matt? To be all virtuous and labour pure like Les Mallow. Or to get a penny an hour. Les wants a penny an hour and all. He wants my job, Matt. And yours for one of his mates. This is all right now, is she? Right, thanks. I keep thinking about poor old Norman Taylor. The way he used to shift the beer. Well, just the last year or two. He hardly touched it in his early days. What do you think started him off? Mm -hmm. When he got bored, Matt. Bored? How can anybody get bored with a job like we've got? I 
like a beast. Worse than a beast. Had they been hitting them? No, oh, I don't know, man. Seemed as if they had. Sit up straight, seat and stand up, seat and sit down, seat and he jumped every time they spoke. It's not like I told to take things lying down. He's never been in a situation like this before, has he? Situation like this? Tom's in prison. He's been punished for thieving. Oh, well, and the rights of property must be protected, eh, Dad? <laughs> they must. Otherwise, the likes of you will never get through college. I'll go. There's more satisfaction lying in a shop than worrying about jailboards. Anything else? Just after you and young Tommy. You know? I told him he was just the same. But did he ask? No, ma'am. Jessie? I told him she sent her love. Said it was nice of her. Doesn't want to see me again either. All he wants is you, ma'am. You and young Tommy. As time as I think we're all he's got. It's not true, man. Tom worked down the pit to put me through college the same as Dad did. And I'll never forget it. I'm trying to tell him, but he just doesn't want to hear. Well, did you put the world right? Not a day we didn't, but we made a start. How about you? I saw three places. Any good? Oh, Jack, the one in Lavender Avenue was lovely. Lavender Avenue sounds like a Nancy's love nest. Oh, that's enough from you, our Matt. Jack had had a garden back and front, and a bathroom in separate WC, and a breakfast room. Well, did you take it? Oh, I couldn't. They wanted 15 shillings a week. 15 bob a week just for renting a house? Well, you go and see them tomorrow and tell them we'll take it. Hey, Jack, do you really think we can afford it? It's an awful lot of money. A hell of a lot of money. You go and take it, pet. I'll make it marvellous. Oh, <laughs> just you wait and see. Hey, Jack, remember what Les Mallow said? Oh, blast, I've run out of beer. Just when I fancied another. Well, slip out the off lines if you like. Thanks, money man. You've got a whole matter in the boat like a dog. He's my assistant pet. They do a lot of fetching and carrying assistance. He doesn't mind. Oh, and anyway, you might have said something about Les Marlowe. Something I'm not supposed to hear. Now, oh. what you on about? Oh, I'm not clever like you. But I'm not daft either. You're up to something. Well, of course I'm up to something. I didn't mean that either. Les Mallow. Matt's frightened. Les might make a fuss if we move into a posh house. That's all. Don't worry. Not an handle, Les. Does Matt really have to go with us when we move? Ah, he does. We'd have more time for this if he wasn't there. Well, that must be time for this, money, lass. Oh, but Jack, you know Matt what... is the best mate I've ever had. And I trust him with my life. But I wonder where I can keep my eye on him. Thank you, my dear. I'd better be off. You've got a minute. Our bill is going round for coffee this morning. Give him my regards. To tell me how Tom was. You never give up, do you, Jesse? Where I found the nerve to propose to you, I'll never know. Are you sure you won't come to the dance tonight? Quite sure. And yet you're letting me go? I'm a rotten dancer. I'll only spoil it for you. Bye. It's good of you to see me again so quickly. Not at all. Gather it's urgent. You haven't brought your reinforcements. Matt's mind in the office. This is confidential and all. You suffered a bereavement, Ford. Today is the 25th. I'm aware of it. Eight years ago today, we had 60,000 casualties at Wipers. Matt and me feel we should mourn the good men that died. Like the sun. That was a song. I was there. And do you mourn them? Or does it help to make your members like you? A bit of both, sir, Rish, you know. Farthing and I was not on. Best I can do. And I'll tell you why. If you don't make it a penny, I'm out of a job. Oh, it will be for long, Ford. And if I'm out of a job, you'll get Les Mallow instead. He's a wonderful fellow, Les. Very strong on conscience. Went to prison for it during the war. Conscientious objector. Aye. They knocked hell out of him in prison. Oh, I always knew they had, but since I've been there myself, being in the army must have been a picnic to what he got. But it hasn't changed him. Nothing will. He'll come here yelling for tuppence. Why? Oh, maybe he'll settle for a penny, maybe not. But even if you give him a penny, he'll be back for more. If he doesn't get it? He'll strike. Fancy a strike, dear manners? Just after you've promised your shareholders a not unreasonable dividend. Still quoting the Financial Times, that interview was a mistake. We all make them. Weren't you struck? You're not hearing me. Either I get that penny or you get Les Mallow and he strikes. 
We're being very honest all of a sudden. I have to be. So you make honestly a weapon. That's right. You're still asking a hell of a lot. I know that. I'll owe you one, Manners. You know me? What? When the time comes, we'll both know. Oh. Have to be a big one. I wouldn't doubt you. But if you turn me down, I'll be back down there again. I won't owe you a thing. And even if I did, there'd be no chance of paying it. A big one? Big as you like, as long as we make it look respectable. Oh, of course. There's an Employers' Federation meeting this evening. But naturally you knew that. Just as you knew that if Lewis Bishop agreed to your terms, the rest would follow. All right. Penny an hour. Thanks. Mm -hmm. To be paid for. Later. Funny that. We trust each other. We have to. Nobody else would. <laughs> oh, by the way, I bought you a present. To celebrate your new job. The Prince by Mac Machiavelli. Machu. He was an Italian. I think you'll find he had the right idea. Any sign of Ford? No. I thought it was a bit hard on him, you know. Well, he's only just started. Get too soft on him, just because he spoke up for Matt Hedley. Not did that well. And I like the way Matt Hedley stuck up for himself at all. He'd like a penny on the rate, no doubt. That's what he's here for, you know. That's why he gets eight pound a week and you get three. <laughs> all right. Militancy, that's what we want out of Brother Ford. That's why we put him where he is, to fight for us. He doesn't fight for us, out he goes. I said all right. Lee. Mr. Ashton. Uh, I saw Tom yesterday. He asked us to give you a message. All right. He said to tell you we're a good marriage. Thanks. So is he. Nice to know you've got a friend you can rely on. And Mrs. Ashton. Aye, <laughs> oh, had a rare hunt for an old. Dear God, but five bob for a few cigars. You know, honest, the best. Here's your change. No, it's all right. Evening, brothers. Two pints of port. Bereavement, is it, Brother Ford? Why, it was Brother Poskett, 60,000 dead, and some of the Marrows, comrades in arms, and today's the day we remember them. Matt and me, we don't forget. That war's over, Brother Ford. Aye, and thanks to our glorious dead, we won. Very touching. Who was it that said that patriotism is the last refuge of the scoundrel? Long words, Brother Mallow. School teacher's words. I spent a lot of the day with a man who gave his son for his country. A son that died in my arms. This man's a capitalist. Maybe he's even a millionaire. Sir so Horatio Manners, Chairman of Lewis Bishop. And I'll tell you this, and I'm not ashamed to say it. He and I knelt in prayer for the sake of a good man gone. Was your prayer answered, brother? I don't know about mine, Les, but yours was. A penny an hour, brothers, as from the first week in January. Hey! <laughs> hey! And we thought you'd join the bosses. Well, hey, man, I'm proud of you. Join the bosses? You've upset me, brother Puskett. I might have to see a lot of them, but I don't forget me friends. Here. <laughs> Have a boss of cigar. Oh. Compliments of Lewis Bishop and Company. I don't smoke. You should, Les. It'd help you relax. You really did it, Jack. I did. One up for Lavender Avenue. Hey, just look at them. They'd do anything for you. You're the one I want to do something for me. Yes, Hold this and don't interfere. I've got a bit of business to settle, and we'll celebrate. You want to her, aren't you? I am. And she's not going to enjoy it. May I have the pleasure, Mrs. Ashton? Another night of triumph, Jack? I get used to them. Why did you spit on me, Jesse? Talking about Sir Horatio Manners? That's right. You told Les Mallow. Why? Because I had to. At least you don't deny it. Did you think I would? No, Jesse C. Not you. Why did you have to? To help Les Mallow do what was right. You remember your Billy saying what a friend I have in Tom? It's nice to know who your friends are. And your enemies. So I'm an enemy now, am I? Hard to tell. 
to the woman. What's so funny? Seeing Brother Poskett reminded me of a fellow I used to see on the walls. What do you used to say now? Who oh, I? A woman is only a woman. A good cigar is a smoke. There was a time I almost forgot that. I think perhaps I made a mistake. I've come to check with him. Hi, Mr. Ashton, you take her home. She doesn't belong here. Not anymore. Salmon. When the boat comes in. <laughs> 